What's up ladies and gentlemen and thank you for watching another one of my videos. My name is Rich Gordon and if you're watching this video that's probably because you've seen some of my rhythm clapping videos on YouTube. Now I've received a lot of questions and comments about those videos but the number one question is always how? How do I make these videos? So today I'm going to show you exactly how I make the videos. We'll go through the step-by-step -step process. I'll talk about the equipment that I'm using. I'll talk about the recording process, the editing, and even uploading them onto YouTube. So if you've been watching my channel and if you're just curious about how I make those videos, let's get started. Here we go. All right guys, so today we're going to talk about the five important steps that go into making my videos. And the first thing I'll talk about is the equipment that I use, including the camera, the green screen, and the lighting. And then I'll talk about the writing and the creative process. I'll talk about recording the video and editing the video, including the programs that I use on my computer to edit with. And then I'll talk about uploading the video onto YouTube. Most of the video is going to be about the equipment and the editing because those are the two most common questions that I get. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been subscribing on YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. That's a question that I get sometimes too. Subscribing on YouTube is just like following somebody on Instagram or another social media website. It just lets YouTube and me know that you like the videos and that you want to see more. But let's get started right away with the first topic, equipment. When I first started making videos, I used my iPhone to record all the video and audio. The only other piece of equipment that I used was a tripod, and you can buy one of those for about $20 to $30. And I also had a little adapter for the tripod that will allow you to attach your iPhone. And those were about $5 to $10. So I would consider a phone and a tripod to be the bare minimum that I would need to record a video, especially if I'm going to keep it simple like I did in my first few videos where I didn't really add a lot of special effects or change the background with a green screen. However, as I made more and more videos and I started to use a green screen and special effects, I found myself having some trouble using my iPhone as the camera, so eventually I decided to buy a Sony A6600 camera, which is a very highly recommended camera that's used by a lot of YouTube content creators. However, it is a bit pricey at about $1300. I also bought a wide-angle lens for the camera that a lot of other YouTube creators recommended, so that had to be purchased separately. And then for audio, I used the Rode VideoMic NTG, which is attached directly to the camera with the small rig cold shoe adapter. Now I will say that I really like the setup that I'm using now, the picture quality and the audio is so much better than it was in my earlier videos, and it does make it easier for me to record and transfer the files. But honestly, using your phone to record a video will be just fine. It's certainly going to give you a much better picture than using a Chromebook or laptop or webcam, and most newer phones have pretty good cameras on them, but I do recommend doing a little research to upgrade your audio. There are a lot of good microphones that you can buy that will plug straight into your phone and they will make a huge difference in the quality of your sound. I should also say that when I'm not on camera, I'm recording all my voiceovers straight into my MacBook Pro using a program called Logic or GarageBand. And for that I use this Blue Yeti microphone, which I highly recommend. The Blue Yeti is a great all-around microphone that a lot of people use. It's great for instruments, vocals, and it can be a great microphone for you to use during your online meetings. The people in your meeting will really appreciate how clear your voice sounds when you're using this microphone. I also use a pop filter to prevent the puff of air from making a sound into the microphone when I say P's and T's. So aside from the camera, the microphone, and the tripod, the only other things that I use in my video is the green screen and a set of studio lights. Now the green screen can be a great way to remove the background and change up the scenery in your video, but you have to have a pretty good video editor on your computer to be able to do that. I use Final Cut Pro in all my editing, and that's a very good program, but we'll talk more about that later as we get into editing. One of the most important and one of the trickiest things to do when you're making a video, especially with a green screen, is to get the right amount of light in the room. Now this is something I've been struggling with for a long time. When I go back and watch some of my earlier videos, I'm really not happy with the amount of lighting. And so I bought these studio lights and you can see a big difference when the studio lights are on. So I bought these studio lights from Amazon. They came in the package deal with the green screen for about $170 and they're definitely a good investment. When I decide to make a video, my first step is to sit down and type out all of my ideas and goals for the video. And then I always type out a script that details exactly what I'm going to say and what I want the video to look like in each scene. So even the video that you're watching right now started as a Word document and I've typed out everything that I'm saying to you. I usually print out my scripts and I keep them next to me while I'm recording and I try to memorize every line so that I can look straight into the camera when I'm recording. Now this is not a step that I consider to be absolutely necessary and I have recorded a few videos in the past without a script. But I find that I'm able to be more efficient and the recording process takes less time if I plan ahead and I know exactly what I'm going to say before I start recording. So after writing the script and setting up the equipment, the next step is to go ahead and start recording. And this can either be the easiest or the most difficult part of the process, depending on how comfortable you are in front of a camera. 
I know you might not believe me, but this is actually the most difficult part of the process for me. I'm still not 100% comfortable in front of a camera and I make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes it takes me 20, 30, or 40 tries just to get one scene correct. But luckily you can always go back and retry it over and over again until you get it right. One thing about having the script here is that it really helps me remember what I'm going to say and it also helps me remember my visual and audio cues. For example, when I'm making my rhythm clapping videos, sometimes I like to do this to put the music on the screen. I also have a metronome here and I start the metronome soft enough so that I can hear it, but then I like to put the drum beat in on top of it during the editing process, like this. And of course, there's our easy button. I'll, uh, I'll put that in during the editing process. Alright, so now it's time to talk about editing and I'm going to use the scene that you just watched me record so I can explain how I make my rhythm clapping videos. As I've said before, I use a video editor called Final Cut Pro and it's available on the Apple Store for about $300, although I got it in the Pro Apps bundle for education when I bought my MacBook Pro, so it only cost about $200 and it came with Logic Pro which is a great sound editor. But there are many other video editors out there that can also do what I'm about to show you in Final Cut Pro, I just don't have any experience with any of the other editors. However, I will say that one of the best resources for learning how to use any video editor is YouTube. I'm not an expert on Final Cut Pro, and I learned how to use the software by watching YouTube tutorial videos created by people who know a lot more about the software than I do. But at least I can show you how I edit my videos, and this will probably apply to a lot of other video editors as well. Once you upload your video into Final Cut Pro, there are so many things that you can do, but for today I'm just going to talk about four things that I do with my rhythm clapping videos. Knowledge. I'm going to talk about how to overlay the sheet music onto the screen, how to add audio like sound effects and music, how to put a background in place of your green screen, and how to add an effect like an explosion like I do for my easy button. For the sheet music, you'll need to use a notation software like Finale. There's a free version of Finale called Notepad that's available at finalemusic.com. And once you get familiar with the program, it doesn't take long to type out the music that you want to share in your video. Then I take a screenshot of the music by holding Shift, Command, and 4 on my MacBook, or if you're using a PC, it would be the Windows key, Shift, and S. Sometimes I use the Lyric tool in Finale to type in the counts below the notes. After I take my screenshots, they appear as JPEG files on my computer, and then I can upload them using the Upload button in Final Cut Pro, or just click and drag them straight into the Final Cut Pro editor right above my original video. Then I can just resize the image using the transform tool and decide exactly when I want the image to appear and disappear. Adding audio like the little ding effect when the music appears, or the drum set beat, I have to find the audio files that I can download online or sometimes I just record my own. Once I have the sound files, I click and drag them straight into the editor. And one trick that I use that makes it easier to line up my audio is that I right click on my original clip and detach my audio from it and then I zoom in so that I can see the sound waves and I can line up the audio much easier. An important note is that when I want to add background music or any sound effects for the video, I use royalty free music so I don't get into copyright trouble when I upload the video. YouTube actually has a large selection of royalty free music that can be used in any video for free. And there are many other artists online like Kevin McLeod who create royalty free music that they allow anybody to download and use for free. Sometimes they just ask that I give them credit in my YouTube video description. Replacing the green screen with a background of your choice can also be very simple or very frustrating depending on how well you had your lighting set up when you recorded and also how well the camera captured the video. If everything went well in the recording phase and if the lighting was good, replacing the background is as easy as choosing an image, dragging it underneath the original video, and then using the keyer tool that you can find in the effects list under keying. I just click the keyer and I drag it on top of my original video and it automatically removes all the green from the video, which again is why it's so important that I'm not wearing any green when I'm recording. And finally, to add the finishing touches to the video, I like to add a few effects and overlays and there are several ways to do this. There are thousands and thousands of add-on effects that you can buy from third-party websites and once you purchase them you can click and drag them straight into your video. But since I'm usually just looking for one or two overlays like an arrow or an explosion, I like to search for free downloadable ones online. If I type what I'm looking for into Google and then I type the words royalty free green screen after it, I can usually find what I want. So after I find an overlay or an effect that I like, I just drag it on top of the original video and then I resize it. And if the downloaded effect has a green screen behind it like this explosion, I can just use the keyer again to remove the green. The editing process for my videos is definitely the most time consuming part of the five steps, and depending on the length and the complexity of the videos or how many layers I use in the editor, it can take anywhere from 5 hours to well over 25 hours of editing time to put together one 7 minute video. I can make one of my simple 3 minute rhythm clapping warm up videos in one day if I work on it for about 8 hours, 
but if you've seen some of my more adventurous videos like the Jurassic Park or the Back to the Future videos, these videos took me well over a week to make and probably about 50 hours for each video if you add up the total time spent on writing, recording, and editing. However, I really do enjoy the time that I spend creating these videos and to be able to share the finished product on YouTube with my students and people from all over the world definitely makes it worth it. And that brings me to my final step in the process, uploading the video to YouTube. Now there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube about how to create a channel and how to upload videos, so I'm not going to talk too much about that, but for now I'll just talk about what I do after I click the upload button and after I drag my video into the uploader. The first thing that I keep in mind is that it's important to acknowledge the creators of my royalty free music or sounds, and that information gets put in the description of my video. I also like to upload my own thumbnail for the video, and although most people like to create that in Photoshop, I usually create my thumbnail in Final Cut Pro right after I make my video. I just find a frame in my video that I want to use by pausing and then I add a title to it and take a screenshot. There are a few important decisions to make before the video is uploaded. First you can decide whether or not to allow comments. Typically I allow comments on any of my rhythm clapping videos where only I'm on screen and then I turn off the comments for any videos that involve my students. Luckily YouTube gives me complete control over the comments and I can delete all the negative messages. And finally I need to decide if I'm going to make the video public, unlisted, or private. If I make a video public, then that means anybody will be able to watch it anytime. If I make it unlisted, then that means that only people who have access to the link will be able to watch it. And of course, if I make it private, then only people who I specifically allow will be able to watch the video. Creating content on YouTube can be time consuming and it can also be rewarding. I know that I'll be sharing the videos that I created with my students for the rest of my career. And I'm really happy to see how many people all over the world are watching my videos. Thank you so much for all of your comments in the YouTube section and for all the messages and emails that I get. I hope this video has been helpful and if you like this video, please hit that like button, please subscribe, and of course, watch my other rhythm clapping videos. As always, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you again next time.